Number 76, integrated concepts. A 160 microfarad capacitor charged to 450 volts is discharged through a 31.2 kilo ohm resistor. Letter A, find the time constant. Okay, so first of all, time constant, we simply know is gonna be equal to the resistance multiplied by the capacitance. They told us the resistance, just be careful with the units. It's 31.2 kilo ohms, but you know we need that in ohms, so simply take 31.2 and multiply it by 10 to the three. Then the capacitance up, they gave it to us in microfarads. We need that in farads, so simply take the 160 and multiply that by 10 to the minus 6th. And voila, time constant time. So 31.2 times 10 to the 3rd times 160 times 10 to the minus 6th. And the time constant here is about 4.99 seconds. All right. And that takes care of letter A. Let's move that on over. Let's take a look at now letter B. It says calculate the temperature increase yeah calculate the temperature increase of the resistor given that its mass is 2.5 grams and its specific heat is 1.67 kilojoules per kilogram degree celsius noting that most of the thermal energy is retained in the short time of the uh, discharge okay so what we now need to do is we need to turn our attention and we have to somehow calculate now the energy all right that is being released so we can do that with the following formula energy is equal to one half CV squared, right? This stands for the capacitance, this stands for the voltage. So now, all I gotta simply do is plug in the values. Now, we're not really done after this. You'll see what, we gotta think about what that energy represents, okay? So the capacitance here they told us was 160 microfarads, but we need that in farads, so simply take that and multiply it by uh, 10 to the minus sixth. And the voltage here is 450, and you gotta square that, okay? And let's simply calculate it. So this is 0.5 then times 160 times 10 to the minus 6 times 450 squared. Oop, I did, oop, I already realized I have an error in the calculator. So 160, uh, 0.5 times 160 times 10 to the minus 6 times 450 squared. So this works out to be about 16.2 joules, all right, of energy. Now, it doesn't want to find energy, it wants us to calculate the temperature increase, but... What I realize, I know temperature increase right when I see a mass and I see a specific heat. I know I'm going to be using Q is equal to MC delta T. And Q represents the heat energy, right? And they're saying, noting that most of the thermal energy is retained in the short time. So in other words, the energy of the discharge here is converted into heat energy. So now I realize that to solve this thing for change in temperature, I just got to divide the mass and the specific heat on out, right? Put a little division sign, and that's the formula now. So Q we just found, that's the energy. That's 16.2 joules. The mass, careful, we need that in kilograms, all right? So this is um, uh, 2.5 times 10 now to the minus 3 kilograms, right? And then um, we need the, this value. It, it would be best if we had it in joules because this is in joules. So what you can simply got to do is take this and then multiply it by 10 to the third, okay? So this is 1.67 times 10 to the third. And that's equal to then delta uh, T. Now if you realize, right, when you do all this 10 to this, that'll, that'll just cancel. So if you forgot to do it, it wouldn't be the end of the world. 2.5 times then 1.67. So it comes out to be 3.88, right? So the change in temperature here is about 3.88 degrees Celsius. All right. That takes care of letter B. And now letter C, it says calculate uh, the new resistance assuming it is pure carbon. All right, so basically now what they want you to do is they want to use your change in resistance formula, right? So letter C here is going to be that the, you know, I like to think about it, the final resistance is equal to that initial resistance multiplied by one plus our alpha value times the change in temperature. Now you have to look up that um, alpha value for carbon. All right, I wrote it down here on the bottom. So your initial resistance in the problem was 31.2 kilo ohms. Okay, and you can leave it in terms of kilo ohms. It really doesn't matter in this problem. Um, it's all relative. So if you left it in kilo ohms, you'd be fine. One plus then our alpha, which is negative 0.5 times 10 to the minus three, then multiplied R by our change in temperature, which is 3.88. And let's see what we get. So we're going to take now negative 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3, multiplied by 3.88, 
and we're going to take one and add it to that negative value. So it comes out to 0.998 or so, and then multiply that by 31.2. So what do we get? It's going to be very close, right? So it's going to be 31.1 now. Kilo, kilo, kilo ohms. If you need that in ohms, just multiply that by 10 to the 3. And that's that answer for letter C. And does this change in resistance seem significant? Well, we can just simply find the ratio. So 31.1 over the initial, which was 31.2. I mean, you tell me, right? I mean, look at it. <laughs> so 31.2 would do, do the division. So 0.998, right? It comes out to the same fraction. I don't even know why I did that. Um, but it works out to be about, you know, the final here is about 99.8% of the initial. Eh, I think it's kind of insignificant. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me for this chapter. I appreciate it. Look forward to moving on to the next chapter as soon as I can. And I'll see you soon. Take care.